All right, welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing time so far. Our next speaker is Giselle Mota. She is a principal, future of work at ADP. Please join me in welcoming Giselle to our virtual stage. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate this time today. So as we kick off, we are talking about where AI, artificial intelligence can actually go right when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I know that a lot of us have heard many horror stories when it comes to this topic. So if, you know, when you think about it, several use cases have revealed where AI has gone wrong, especially in terms of bias and discrimination. However, AI can do, and it should do right. It is doing right. There's a lot of use cases. I'm gonna to share today some examples with you. There's from the potential to provide enhanced data insights into diversity hiring, uh, in order to skills map people for the diverse workforce, right? Including all different types of people and really leveling the playing field, personalizing candidate and the worker experience to opportunities to turn AI itself into a data uh, bias detector. So we're gonna talk about that today as we move forward and let's kind of get into one of the next areas. You probably have heard about the documentary called Coded Bias. Now to level set, Again, we have heard so many horror stories. You've seen it in the headlines. There have been issues of bias and discrimination in data sets. What's happening is that in many cases, the data itself shows a human issue. It's not that the AI is biased. It's not that it's you know, coming out to get us. It's really that what AI is doing is surfacing the discriminatory and biased data that exists inherently in the way we use language, in the way that we navigate the world, in the way we classify people. For example, you've probably heard about video recruiting and there's been some sites that have been using video recruiting tools to quantify someone's aptitude or skill sets towards if they have, for example, are, are they joyful? Are they happy? Are they a friendly candidate? Well, how do you really quantify that using artificial intelligence and data with machine learning algorithms that are just looking at points on somebody's face with facial recognition and computer vision when perhaps that person may have had Botox or perhaps that person uh, was had a stroke or perhaps the person has a different, uh, a different type of facial expression than what the data was trained in the set to identify what friendliness looks like. So these are issues where a lot of people have often been denied job opportunities um, we have seen algorithms apply beauty standards, credit scores, criminal indicators on people wrongfully. And these are just ways in which data has to be kind of reimagined and looked at because of the bias and the inherent bias that often happens in data that's collected by humans, that's scored through sources and sources of different places, and then it's surfaced by artificial intelligence. So when we move forward and we look at some other areas here, the first area I want to talk about is how AI can be used for good in diversity towards mitigation of bias. So one of the examples that we'll see next has to do with revealing diversity, equity, and inclusion gaps. So in order to mitigate bias, there are people today, even the company I work with right now, ADP, uh, has developed dashboards where you look at an employee or a, a worker from hire to retire, and you start to look in the gaps and you start to re let artificial intelligence reveal the diversity gaps that exist across the entire organization. That can be surfaced through a dashboard and perhaps a storyboard, like what you're looking at on the screen at this moment. Perhaps AI can send out a nudge, a notification to the manager, to the leader of that organization to start looking at where those areas of gaps are. And AI can also begin to help surface and bring forth benchmarking to see and help an organization understand not only where are my gaps, but where am I perhaps lagging behind my competition? What do my peers look like? Where do I stand? What does good look like? So gaps are revealed with AI uh, showing the data around diversity, equity, and inclusion, but also accountability towards actual action. We've heard it. So many people have been talking about promises and commitments and things organizations are doing towards diversity, equity, and inclusion, but the real change is in the action that follows up. AI is able to help send notifications and bridge the gap. If there is a pay gap in an organization, now AI can say, hey, because you have this certain pay gap, we recommend that you would 
close the gap by taking X, Y, Z action. And these are tools that do exist today. Then you can start navigating the data a little bit more and you can start understanding, hey, maybe it's my recruiting pipeline. Perhaps the candidates start off diverse, but then they fall off because our hiring managers at the end are making decisions that may be biased or we might be making the same types of hiring decisions over and over, hiring the same profile of candidate. And then that data insight and those anomalies and trends uh, can be surfaced to the end user so that they can actually take action and close those gaps. Everything from leadership uh, positions, and we can start looking at those areas by race, ethnicity, gender. Perhaps we can start sorting through the data and identifying, is this an issue by department, by manager, by job level, by location? And AI will be able to point to those issues, anomalies, trends, and help close the gap. A next area where we look at is where AI can help mitigate bias and diversity, equity, and inclusion is focusing on skills. So we know that there is a major skills gap that exists as the future of work continues to evolve, as more and more people start to uh, either retire from the workforce or have this great exodus that we've been looking at uh, currently, especially in the times of the pandemic of leaving the job force and eventually starting to return. However, those labor market trends will pan out. We do see that skills is a major, major issue. Uh, organizations now can use artificial intelligence to not only identify the skills that one candidate has from their resume, the data that comes from their resume, their application, the manual entries that they would put in while they are uh, currently sitting in a role or perhaps applying to a role externally, and perhaps it's coming through sources like their LinkedIn profile. So AI can sort through that data. It can then take your sample data of what is a good candidate look like? What was that good hire in your organization that's doing well? It can also look at the job and understand what are the skill sets required for that job. And then it can begin to match it and identify, is this candidate a high ranking management, a high ranking candidate, a middle one, or are they a low ranking candidate? And where AI comes into place here is looking at someone's resume, extracting those pieces that don't have anything to do with the true skills. Rather, it could lead into bias and discrimination. So taking away anything around gender, around what school they went to, their education, their age, any of those items can be removed and the algorithm can be trained to look only at skill sets. When that happens, we can also start to train the algorithm to look for diverse candidates. And so this is something that uh, is happening. More and more organizations are using talent finder type of uh, skills and uh, they're looking at people with diverse skill sets in the organization and with, from without the organization to bring them in and leverage those diverse skill sets, whether it's someone with a disability, someone with a different race and ethnicity, someone of a different gender. We can also look at candidate relevancy and start even using chatbots in AI to make that recruiting more diverse. So removing that human unconscious bias sometimes uh, that a recruiter could have and start using an AI chatbot to help screen candidates, do some of that matching and pre-screening work behind the scenes, and even give a candidate a personalized experience as they're applying to a job through understanding with natural language processing, et cetera, how the candidate is experiencing, what jobs should you recommend they apply to, et cetera. Okay, so moving forward as well, one other area I wanted to touch on is fostering learning. This is a big one. So when it comes to mitigation of bias, we have uh, even a tool within uh, ADP as well that's called TMBC, the Marcus Buckingham Company Standout. It's an AI-driven coaching uh, platform that is looking at everyone on the basis, not of what makes them different in, in various ways of their diversity. However, it's more about their strengths. And the strengths of an individual starts talking about the cognitive diversity of an individual. So we start to take the data uh, and start to understand the profiles of different people who work in the organization. We engage with them, the managers can engage, and it's using AI to help personalize the coaching and the feedback that a, that a manager can give their associate at work. We've heard all kinds of learning tools as well. So think about LMSs, now curating content like you would curate uh, your feed on, on Netflix to tell you and recommend uh, your next thing that you should watch. Well, LMSs are now beginning to help people, let's say that you might be dyslexic such as myself, or you may have some sort of learning uh, difference, right? The way you approach learning. 
AI can tailor and customize how you should receive information, how a candidate or an employee can receive information so that that diverse individual can ex ex succeed and excel at whatever they do at work. We also have AI driven coaching that exists out in the marketplace. So think about if you have uh, a manager and they don't really know how to use inclusive language or sometimes they say things out of turn or out of place. Well, AI can now be used to listen, again, uh, using kind of listening and uh, synthesis of language and computer vision as well to start listening, looking at the body language, et cetera, of someone presenting or someone in a meeting, sometimes a manager, and provide them direct and personalized feedback on how they might want to improve so that they create a culture of belonging and inclusion. We also have virtual reality and augmented reality that could be driven by AI which there is a virtual reality that exists today that you can immerse yourself into the learning experience of another individual. So the lived experience, you put on your, your VR glasses, you can go ahead and get into this simulation and you now can take on the gender, the skin tone, the disability, et cetera, of another person and navigate through a training experience of what it would be like to be in the shoes of that person. This exists today. These are tools that continue to develop and AI can be used to then uh, assess, how did you do answering the questions? How did you do in your assessment? Then feed insights to you on how you can improve and learn as you go. Finally, AI can interpret inclusive communication. So there are apps today that exist uh, from producers like Microsoft and many others that are taking, for example, someone who speaks using uh, American Sign Language or any kind of sign language, start using machine learning, computer vision, uh, and the algorithms to determine uh, what is the probability that that means like thank you or that this means hello, et cetera. So then when you are navigating, you're talking to someone like on a virtual setting, you can understand what that person is saying without the need of an interpreter because AI will do that. So moving forward, um, now let's look at some opportunities that lay ahead in front of us. And some of those opportunities that you'll see on this next slide include, and I'll review them briefly, so some of them, we've just talked about so many ways where AI can be applied to diversity, equity, and inclusion. These are real cases that are happening today. So moving forward on this slide, I just wanna tell you about new areas and advanced and even more areas of opportunity that can exist for AI to do good towards diversity, equity, and inclusion. There's always ways to move forward. So one of them is reviewing job descriptions and looking at the terms for any terms that can discriminate you know, is there something on there that's in exclusive language around someone with a disability? Uh, can you use the AI to go ahead and sort through the language and find gender, uh, race, ethnicity, any kind of discriminatory language that might be being used? You can use this on so many different areas. People are developing it today, but there's still so much more opportunity to go. Secondly, you can look at organizational network analysis with AI-driven insights. So ONA is nothing new. However, using AI to surface insights and really start looking deep into if you do have pockets in your organization that are, that are outliers and that they're not really integrating and they're not really working together, it, perhaps it's your groups of diversity, it's your groups of, of underrepresented individuals who are working in your organization. Keying in on those points and being able to understand with org organizational network analysis through AI can help for workforce planning, it can help uh, move forward with diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts as well. Third, I have here personalized recommendations. So we talked about it before a little bit about curation of content, but think about like if you do have gaps that come up, AI can start telling you where you need to take action, that you should take action ahead of time. It can predict ahead of time before you start getting into issues. It can help you set plans for training, um, learning, uh, certain projects, certain campaigns that you want might want to start thinking about in your organization. It can also be personalizing learning, uh, training for internal career mobility. So we talked about AI to be used to determine skills, but it can also help map skills. So imagine if you had an, or an individual in the organization who, uh, who was in a job, but they just didn't have all the skills needed to get to that next place. Well, you can use AI to help understand how to get them to that next place. What training do they need? Do they, should, they, should they have a special assignment? Uh, should they take on a project to work, a stretch assignment? Are those the kind of things that are going to help the individual get from point A to point B and et cetera down their career path? 
Uh, on here as well, VR and AR, I just mentioned, uh, we are hearing a lot about the metaverse moving forward and we're hearing so much um, about this. And I will tell you that one of the ways in which we can use virtual reality is to continue to provide immersive learning experiences. And finally, AI ethics, a big deal. I do recommend that you watch Coded Bias. On here, you can detect bias, you can um, use AI to understand where is info being stored, like facial recognition or biometrics, especially now with the pandemic and we're storing people's health-related information and even some of their biometrics. How are the decisions being used? And maybe even provide an AI-enabled report at the end of a year to show people how was your data used? How was AI using your data in our organization? And finally, just to close, I hope that today you got a great information that you're able to uh, understand that although AI has been used and there have been issues with it, it's a learning process. Uh, it's a way where it's an opportunity for people to step in with ethics, with uh, governance, and really start looking at these issues. And because of the issues that have arisen, there have been cases like I just shared with you today, and there will continue to be cases where AI can actually be used to flip itself on its head and start helping people with diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thank you for your time. If you want to connect, that's my information. Wow, Giselle, thank you so much. That was amazing. And I know this virtual audience is going wild with virtual applause. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for sharing with us today. For the audience, it's time for you to make your way to your next session. Along the way, make sure you accept your connection request and take some time to check out our amazing exhibits. Thanks so much, and we'll see you around.